Quick one, guys. I just wanted to tell you about Anchor. Anchor is the platform that I use to record podcasts. It lets me edit my podcast and also distributes the podcast to other sites such as Spotify and Apple Podcasts and many, many more. It is super easy to use. The best part about it is that it is completely free. To check it out, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started on becoming a podcast superstar. You can use Anchor on your phone or on your computer. The best thing about it is that it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place hello and welcome to gentle touch this podcast is a place where people can learn discover and upscale mentally spiritually and emotionally this show is all about breakthroughs so get ready for some good vibes realness and lots of information you will be joined by me your podcast host alejandra castro some of the shows will be just me and other shows will have guests open up new perspectives and views My passion is to inspire and educate people who feel stuck. I will show you ways you can improve your overall health by sharing powerful tools that you can implement into your daily life. Let's get started. On today's episode, we have a very special guest. We have Lex. She is your go-to girl to manifest the life of your dreams. Please welcome Lex onto the show. Okay, Lex, so tell me about yourself. Where are you based? I am currently located in Kansas City, Missouri. (laughs) Lovely, Lex. And you are a manifestation expert. Tell me about your journey and then why is this your niche and how did it all come about? Yeah, so gosh, I think I first learned about manifestation. I was young, probably early middle school. um, And I found it through The Secret, which a lot of people, that's where their initial exposure to manifestation is. And I I saw the movie. I I didn't see, well, read the book until after they go hand in hand, but I was just fascinated when I saw that, that movie and it just, it changed my life and I just wanted to know more and more about it. And so, you know, through the years, through high school and stuff, it was always kind of in the back of my mind and I had manifested a couple big things here and there, but I didn't really think about it as a way of life until about my early to mid twenties. And then once I started to realize like, Hey, this isn't just a means to an end or like a means to get something. This is like a whole lifestyle, really. Like I can create my entire life this way. And so I really started to take it seriously. And eventually I was like, you know what? I've, I've read all the books. I've watched all the content. I've done all the things and I want to help women realize this and figure this out for themselves as well. And so that's when I decided, you know, I should, I should make this a thing. I want to, make this a business. I want to help women. I want to coach them through this. And that's how I kind of came to be. (laughs) I love it. Did you, did you in the beginning find it easy as in like, like manifest, or do you think the more you manifest or the more you practice, the more easier it gets? Or like, how do you think it works? I think people get really caught up in all the stuff that they see and they really like, read or hear about on like TikTok or the internet and things like that. And they really do make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Really, it all is taking place within our minds, our mindsets and our in our body. You know, people think that they have to do all these crazy rituals and things. And while that absolutely can help, it's not necessary. And so as you really learn about things and you learn how to do it and you learn the basis of what manifestation really is, you don't need that stuff anymore you really just need your brain and yourself and you know maybe a pen and and paper and and that's really it so yes I mean it does get easier it it just it depends so I firmly believe that this is really just a lifelong journey like there are things that I want to manifest that I still continue have to to have to do the work on you will have to do the work the inner work for the rest of your life. And that's just the way it is. And that's not a bad thing because as you do the the work, you really do learn about yourself. And so it does get easier in a sense, but the work never really stops. How would you say it to someone that like wants to manifest, wants to get into manifest, like manifesting, they read the book, they're kind of still unsure. How would you like explain, say like, okay, well, listen, you have to do that inner work. You have to believe and you have to work on yourself. Um, what steps could you give that individual? I, the basis that I always go off of, you know, the the foundation to manifestation is really about how you feel. It's about your emotions. And so when you want to, you know, when we want to manifest things because we think that they're going to bring us happiness, right? We want, you know, a lot of 
people want to manifest money, cars, houses, relationships, travel, things like that. And we want those things because we think that they're going to bring us happiness. So I tell people the first place you want to start really is to just feel joy as often as you can, however that may be. So just find something that you enjoy doing, whether that's painting, if that's reading a book. For me, it's being outside and being outside in nature and like going for hikes and things like that. That's my happy place. It it could be dancing around the kitchen while you cook. It could be anything. Anything that brings you a sense of joy, you want to really make sure that you're prioritizing. And also self-love. I think that a lot of people miss the mark on that. Everything goes off of joy and happiness and also love. So if you are experiencing those feelings more and more, the universe is going to give you more and more of that. So instead of focusing on like all these methods and things like that, I say start with joy, start with happiness and start with love. I love that you said that. I love that you said that because there's people that like will attract these things or they will buy these things for the wrong reasons, like the latest sports car. And it's like to impress their following or their audience or to impress their family or to impress friends. And it's like sometimes I've seen interviews and they're like, you know what, like that fuzzy feeling or the happy hormones didn't last that long. Right. Well, it's because it's not coming from the right place. You know what I mean? Like that's not actually what's going to make you happy. You're doing it because you want to impress people, like you said. So it's it's really about finding that inner happiness first. And what is really crazy about manifestation that I think a lot of people don't realize is they want to, you know, people want to manifest, say the car, for example, because you were talking about the fancy sports car. Say they want to manifest that sports car. When they start to focus on feelings of joy and happiness and things, what ends up happening is they manifest more of that and they end up manifesting situations or things that they didn't think of at first, but that actually bring them joy. So it might not, you know, they might get some different car or something else and they're like, wow, I've really never needed that car in the first place. And it's, so it's kind of funny how that works. Yeah, it, it's all about where you're coming from. And that's that's very internal. I love that. Say for the individual that's new to this, is listening for the first time, what other example could we give the listener? Say when, when it's coming from a different place and say, for example, happy, like you're thinking about joy, you're thinking about love, you're thinking about respect, and then you attract more things. And then when you manifest it, would you attach that feeling to the object? Well, so what's really happening is you're you're curating those feelings for yourself. And so, you, you know, we have a vibration, right? Everything that you see, everything, this entire universe is made up of particles that are vibrating. And so when we have, when we experience emotion, we change our vibration. So we're vibrating on a different level when we're happy versus when we're sad. And so when you vibrate on, um, you know, a, a, a level or a frequency of happiness, the universe, by way of law of attraction, and some of the other universal laws as well, is going to bring more of that vibration to you. And that's why a lot of people, you know, who learn about manifestation, they hear, oh, like attracts like. So when you're vibrating at that frequency, you're going to get more of that frequency. So you're going to get more things Um, And not even necessarily objects. It usually comes in by way of like opportunities or experiences or even people that come into your life and bring you more of that happiness. So for example, another example would be like a job. So some people say, oh, I want to manifest, you know, my dream job. And you can do that. Absolutely, you can do that. But what happens is sometimes people will interview for their dream job and they don't get it. And they're like, well, what the heck? This doesn't work. Well, that's not the job then that's going to bring you the happiness that you desire to feel. And so what ends up happening is sometimes people will manifest a job that they didn't even think of because the universe will bring you what you want or something better. And so when you're vibrating on that level of happiness, it's going to bring you that job that gives you that same happiness and the same love, same feelings of joy. I love that. Yeah, it does. It does. And especially like what I've... What the bit that I thought was the sweetest was when you say like, um, uh, uh, like when people may come into your life or they may walk into your life, especially when you meet someone out of surprise, like you didn't expect to meet someone. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and that's why when, you know, relationships too, we can manifest relationships. But I think what people get stuck on is they're, they're you know, thinking about all the things that they want, but they're not becoming that themselves. You have to be love before you can manifest love. I love that. I love that because in the world we live in now, it's such a struggle. You have to do the inner work um, and you have all these different expectations and it's like you need to be able to remove all of that and then just look into yourself and say, you know what, am I practicing self-love? Am I practicing self-respect? Am I practicing, um, am I going by my standards and boundaries? Um, Yeah, what's been your biggest manifestation or ones that's been like, wow, like, wow. That's so hard. There's so many. Yeah. <laughs> I And I say that not to come off like bragging by any means, but I've really, I've chosen and I've created the life that I live. So it's hard to pick one thing because it's really just the aspect of all of it. Like, you know, I say, I, you know, I manifested a house, but really what I manifested was a home. Oh, you know I, I mean? love that because a house, you can, a house may not be a home and you make the home. Right, right. It might be the most beautiful house in the world and it might be what you think is your dream house, but I didn't want to manifest just a dream house. I mean, my home is my dream house, but it is a home. So I, I, you know, that's a huge thing that I manifested. Travel is insanely important to me. I think that the first thing I really manifested without even knowing it, because the truth of the matter is we are manifesting even if we don't know what manifestation is. Once people learn about about manifestation, it becomes a situation of um, like conscious, like consciously manifesting. Yeah. Uh, we're manifesting always. And so um, I think one of the craziest things for me was I remember as a kid, we went on a family vacation to Aruba. And wow. I was the first time like – on a vacation in a tropical, you know, place. And I was like, wow, I just, I'm going to live on an island one day. And I was like, I don't know, seven, eight years old. And my parents were like, aha, uh-huh, yeah, whatever. Because, you know, when society on the mainland in the United States tells us, oh, you know, that's not really, that's not really something that happens. Like, that's probably not going to happen. I was like, no, I'm going to live on an island one day. And oh, I love that. I've, I grew up around the ocean, so I've always been like ocean obsessed. And when I saw palm trees for the first time, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And it stuck with me. Like it just stuck with me through my childhood. I was just always into that sort of thing. And then when I was 19, 20 years old, I actually moved to Hawaii. Wow. And it kind of hit me that I was like, wow, you know, I always said that I was going to live on an island and here I am living on an island. (laughs) And so it wasn't something that I was like, oh, I want to manifest living in Hawaii and I'm going to sit and I'm going to write in my journal about living in Hawaii and I'm going to visualize living in Hawaii. I didn't do it consciously. I was a kid just daydreaming about living on an island and I ended up living on an island because that's what the universe brought to me. You know what I mean? I love it. How, how how long did you live in Hawaii? I was there for um, about six months. Um, I decided that I wanted to take some coursework at the university there. And so I did. And it was just incredible. It just was such a life changer. I wasn't there for what some people would consider a long time. Um, I ended up coming back because I decided when I was out there that I did really want to be closer to family. Um, So it's just funny, like how all of that kind of worked out. Yeah, of course. It's an amazing experience. Not even that for your university to be linked. Mm -hmm. To to be able to have that opportunity to, to actually go there. That's a plus bonus. Yeah. Yep. And the universe is always conspiring in your favor. There's, it's always going to work out and it's going to work out in ways that you can imagine. I, when, you know, if you told me when I was eight years old that like I was going to be able to live on an island and go to the university, I would have been like, what? Really? No way. But I wanted both things. Like when I got to that age to start thinking about school and stuff, I I wanted to go to school. And so the universe just kind of gave me two of those things in one package. I love that. I love I love how like from childhood you still remember. Like yours like wow, like I remember. I remember talking about this. I remember seeing it. I remember daydreaming. And for you to be now and to be able to see it, it's like, yeah. 
Like it, it, I understand it and it all clicks in. Say for example, for the individual that's like manifesting something extremely big and they just have this kind of like distrust. They're like thinking, you know what? I'm manifesting this big thing with a B. I want to change. I want to move to another country. I want this job opportunity. I want this big promotion. And they just keep thinking, how will this happen? Like, how do you tell someone like to let go of the because the universe will will make sh- mountains move like it will do its thing but then sometimes it's us holding ourselves back yes and i'm so glad that you asked that because it truly is one of the biggest things that come up for people in manifestation it really is it's the question that everybody asks and when we try to control the how well first let me back up i'm going to say that Really, in this manifestation process, you control two things. You control what you want, you decide what you want, and you decide why you want it. So like we were talking about before, we manifest things, we think that they're going to bring us happiness. So when you decide what you want, and it's really important to get clarity about why you want it. What's the higher good for all? What is this going to bring me in terms of like my feelings? How, how is this going to make me feel? Why do I truly want this? And so that's our job. The universe's job is to decide how it comes to us and when it comes to us. And so when we try to control how something's going to come to us or when it's going to come to us by like planning too much, like, cause we do have to take action and that's a separate thing. But when we're planning or trying to decide um, how something's going to come, say, for example, let's go back to the relationships. If we are trying to decide, oh, you know, I have to go to this place because I might meet my someone or my Mr. Right or Mrs. Right or whatever. You're controlling how that person's going to come to you. And it's that's the biggest resistance that we can have. And so when we're creating this resistance, we're also harboring feelings of lack. And when we're, fe- you know, we're feeling the resistance and we're feeling lack by constantly be like, oh gosh, how's it going to come? How's it going to come? We're creating so much resistance and the universe is just going to bring us more of that. Oh no. And, yeah. And and it's just going to keep, you know, it's going to have us keep spinning our wheels and and wondering, you know, when's it coming? When's it coming? I don't have it. I don't have it. It's just going to keep giving you situations in which you feel that. And I don't say that for you to worry by any means. Um it's just something for you to be aware of so that you can step back and you can detach from the situation and detach from the thing that it is you want. You obviously need to want it you you know it's something that you want to have because it's going to bring you those feelings right but instead just just let go like just let go of the attachment to it you have to trust that the universe is going to bring it to you instead of just constantly thinking and wishing about it just kind of like put it in another place when you realize that you're thinking and wishing about it too much just say you know what this is something that I, I really want and so I don't want to control the outcome I forgive myself for, you know, trying to control and then just move on to things that you're grateful for or move on to something that is going to create the feelings that you think you're going to have by manifesting that thing. So if you want to manifest a relationship again, and you want to feel the love, well, create the love within yourself. And that's how we start to let go. I love this. I love the way you said just let go because sometimes letting go is the hardest of everything. The, the task in itself can be so hard and so draining. Absolutely. And you know, it's so easy to say, oh, just let go. It's like, well, if it were that easy, then I'd be manifesting everything. (laughs) And that's why I say it always comes back to creating opportunities for yourself to feel the feelings. So you're able to let go when you're able to step into the present and create those feelings right now. So if you don't want those, you know, you're creating resistance and you don't want those feelings of lack and resistance, you want feelings of abundance, you want feelings of love and you want feelings of happiness. So create that in the now and that will help to separate from the how. For for someone that's struggling to do this, would you say like maybe writing it down in a journal or maybe daydreaming it or just maybe visualizing what they want? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is going to be different for everybody. So I'm not a huge writer. I do journal, but I prefer to visualize and meditate. And if I do journal, it's more visualization based, like I'll script. But I don't, I don't do like there are methods called like the uh, three six nine method and stuff like that. I don't do that. 
I just visualize, I journal. Like I said, all you need is your brain. So they can do that. They could also just gratitude, like practicing gratitude is huge. Writing down things you're thankful for. If you don't want to write them down, just speak them out loud. You could go on a gratitude rampage and just look around and like name all of the things that you're thankful for. So there's many ways to do it. That works so well. I used to do that. I used to write like a list of 10 things and honestly it just puts you in such a positive mindset and like just, I don't know, it was it was amazing. It was just brighten up my day. It, I think it's the quickest way to kind of get yourself out of a funk too. If you're like you're having a bad day and you sit and you're like, gosh, what I don't have anything to be grateful for today. If you just look around, you can find a million things. And as you start to name them, you, you could you can literally feel your vibration change. I think that's the craziest thing. And and that's what I like to point out to people who are like, vibration, what are you talking about? Yes, you are constantly vibrating. And if you're having a bad day, you're vibrating at like a lower frequency. And when you practice that gratitude, you can feel your body start to change. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And especially when you walk into a room or 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 you walk or you're next to a group of people, you, you can feel like I don't know sometimes the energy repels you like like the frequency and you just feel like oh my gosh I feel so out of place like this isn't for me yeah exactly Lex I was gonna ask you um what was it that you mentioned is it the 359 method three uh, the three six there's a bunch of them there's like the 369 method there's the 55 or 555 or 55 times five honestly I don't even remember what they're called because I think that they're too prescriptive and I think that people get very caught up in them and it doesn't need to be that way it doesn't have anything to do with writing your you know manifestations a certain number of times the point of it is to get into the feeling and the vibration of your manifestation so the idea is you write down your manifestation so many times then you're creating more opportunity to feel the feeling do you get what i'm saying yeah yeah a hundred so yeah people get caught up they're like oh i missed it you know this night or oh i only was able to write it 10 times it's fine it's okay you don't even have to do it. It's just a tool and one that I think is a little too prescriptive. But some people say that it works for them. And if it if that's the case, then fine. You know, I encourage people to try things and find what works for them. Or like, have you ever seen when you say, you know what, I want this particular car. And then you start seeing the car like on every second street, wherever you go, you just see the same car everywhere. Yeah, that's your uh, reticul... Reticu- My goodness, I cannot talk today. It, it's a special system in your brain, reticular activating system. And basically, it's like a filter that your brain puts out. And it just goes to show that the you know what you think and what you believe shapes your what you see in reality, because it seems like you're seeing more and more, but you're, you know, that's all filtering through your brain through the filters that you put in. I love it. I love it. Yeah, no, no, it's happened in the past. Like we're like, or oh, someone's telling me about something and I just see the same car everywhere and I'm like whoa what's going on here no it's really really good let's say if someone is new to manifestation would you would you recommend to start off with the secret I I do think that that's a very good starting point and when I say starting point (laughs) I mean foundational level because it there is a lot more that goes into it if you if all you see is the secret uh, it's not the whole picture, but it's a very good starting place. And it's a it's a good spot for you to kind of start to change your thinking. And say if they've read it, where, in what direction should they go? Should they listen like to either podcasts or like maybe documentaries or what route should you they know, take? I always say you go with the route that feels the best for you. If you are gravitating toward a specific author or you know, a specific coach or a specific public speaker, whatever it is, whatever you're gravitating to is the universe pulling you in that direction because that's what it is that you need to hear or read or whatever the case may be. I love that. Lex, what does your routine look like? Do you have any, like a special routine or is it like with regards to manifestation? I wouldn't say that I, I I definitely have a routine. But I'm very flexible with it because when I try to be too rigid with my routine, I it starts to fall apart on me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I just I don't like to be too prescriptive with anything. I, I really do like to go based off what I need in the moment. 
And if I, you know, just need, for example, a little bit more meditation time, or maybe I just need more time exercising, then I'm going to do that. I'm going to listen to my mind and my body and make decisions based on that rather than saying, oh, I have to do this, this, and this. But in general, I always make time to move to move my body, some sort of exercise. I practice gratitude every single day. And I, I'd i like to say I meditate every day. Sometimes I don't, but meditating is a very, very important part of my overall routine. I love that. I love that. Yeah, no, no, it's so important. The exercise is important. It's, it's so good for the mindset as well. Um, Lex, what did you study at university? I studied speech language pathology. <laughs> what is totally different? What, what is that? Is that like is that like how we put words together, or how? I, 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 educate me. <laughs> so, a speech language pathologist is someone who treats communication disorders. Okay. And so, communication disorders occur over the entire lifespan. We also treat feeding disorders, so we can treat babies, you know, who aren't swallowing correctly all the way up to, you know, end of life situations, uh, patients with dementia, school age children who can't pronounce their speech sounds, school age children who can't, you know, formulate grammatically correct sentences, uh, even people who've had traumatic brain injuries and things like that. Anybody and everybody who needs help with communication in some way, shape or form or swallowing we do that as speech language pathologists. That's amazing. That's, um, that's, that's, I don't know. I've never met, um, someone that does that. And I, I feel like it's really good. It's really, it's really, um, rewarding. Yes, it is. It is. It's especially rewarding when you see, um, you know, someone relearn how to talk or, you know, a kid finally be, understood by his classmates it's it's very exciting. oh that's lovely so, so okay so you was doing that did you actually how 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 did your journey begin as in did you did you graduate and and work in the sector or did you kind of when did you go into manifestation full-time um so yes I went into the field right after I graduated so I also went to grad school because you have to go to grad school to be able to practice speech pathology um, so I went into the field right away. And then last year is when I um, got my business up and running. Um, Congratulations, still, girl. <laughs> thank you. I do still practice speech language pathology because I do still have a huge passion for it. And I don't think it's something that I'll ever give up. You know, I, I love my business and I also love that. So I, I definitely want to keep my feet wet in speech for sure. That's really, really good. It's also, a, it's also a skill set that like I've learned and developed and I want to keep my skills sharp and I still want to help people in that way. So a hundred percent. And not only that, like it, it teaches you so much like um, determination, mindset, um, listening, it, like it, 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 in general, there's so many skills you can transfer absolutely absolutely to other areas so so tell us about your business tell us about you uh, tell us about your growth how was it was it easy oh it definitely wasn't easy <laughs> there was a lot to learn and there always is a lot to to learn especially in business especially for someone who doesn't have like a business background yep. uh, like I said I went to school for something totally different so this was something that I really had to learn but I do love it I love seeing women totally transform and finally like you know when I when I talk to women at first it's like gosh there's just something missing like I know that I'm meant for more like I I see all my friends and all these people online living this life. And it's like, gosh, I just want to live like that. And it's like, well, you know what? You can. And it's so fun to see people go from that to finally, like, stuff just starts happening for them. And they're like, oh, my gosh, is this magic? And it's like, no. I, I mean, it is to, you know, the human mind. But really, this is this is the universe just working and doing what it does best. And you have access to this always. And so... It's a really fun journey to see people go through. No, I can imagine. I can imagine. And not even that. You can see their confidence go up. Like you will see like the shine in the eyes. They'll be feeling like more happy with themselves, more happy with life, and more confident. What did your family say when you said, I'm, I'm going into the manifestation field? You know what? I'm really blessed with a very supportive family. So they were very excited. I think that they didn't really understand. Aww how 
uh, you know, coaching works. Like, I don't love to call myself a coach because I don't see my, I think coaching, the word coach kind of implies um, a, a difference in like hierarchy. Okay. But I, I like to think of myself as like an equal, you know, I just happen to know all this stuff and I want to share it with you and um, be your best friend through it. Um, and I think that they just didn't really understand what coaching really was. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a newer concept that especially came about with social media. And so once I explained it, it made more sense, but they were always, always supportive. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that like it was an easy journey because sometimes a family may put a bit of like restriction or just a bit of resistance, especially when you've gone to university, you've got a degree, especially when the degree now comes with a job and then you turn around and you say, oh, hey guys, you know what? Well, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Lex, I was going to say, what could be some of the blocks holding an individual from manifesting? Oh, there can be so many. There can be so many. Limiting beliefs, I think, are the biggest ones because, you know, we grow up in this world and we grow up in society and society has its own rules, if you will. And society has this thought of how things should be and how things are. And it just kind of is what it is. And you really have to break all of those rules to understand that you can have it however you want. (laughs) Money doesn't have to be hard to make. You can travel. You don't have to work a nine to five if you don't want to. All of these rules that society has created for us, we, we really have to break them down. And we have been learning these rules since we came out of the womb. It's just how it is. And breaking them down is really difficult because they are so ingrained and so hardwired that it's a lot of work. But once you start to break down those limiting beliefs and rewire them into beliefs that are conducive to, you know, your manifestation journey and really just the way that it is, because it is true, you don't necessarily have to work hard for money. Money comes easily. You know, all the things that you want can be easy. It's attainable for you. People think that, oh, you know, I, that's, I can't ever have that. And it's not true. You can have whatever you want. It's just a matter of believing it. And so I think that that's where people get caught up the most is really in their belief systems. I love that you said that. I love that you said about society because um because that's how we grow up. It's like you go to school, you get your qualifications, then you go to university. And I've come across like people because I'm freelance and I work in healthcare and I come across people and they're like so scared to leave the comfort zone. Because in London, like in the UK, if you work your normal nine to five, it would it, it pays you a lot more less than if you was to do freelance like agency work mm-hmm. and it's like I will see people struggling financially like with a wife with a partner with children and I'm like why don't you just do freelance part-time and they just don't want to leave their comfort zone they just and it's like you're struggling financially like why don't you just do it so at least it helps you it helps with your with your life at home it helps your partner it helps the children like at least if you want to afford a bigger place you can do that now but it's like they don't want to they're so scared yeah and that's our subconscious talking to us so your subconscious and your ego are a biological thing that we have to keep us safe so anything that feels safe to us we it's evolutionary we we want to hold on to the things that are safe because back in the day you know when you know we had to survive. (laughs) We weren't going and exploring unknown places if we had an area that was known to have food and shelter and safety and water, right? And so now that we don't really have to worry about that as much, you know, we have more resources and things available to us. Our subconscious is still there, like wanting to keep us safe. And so if if you have a job that is bringing in money, you know that it's bringing in money, it's going to be hard for you to leave it because it feels safe and the unknown does not feel safe to us. So getting into a new job or exploring a different different field, it's unknown. We don't know truly what's going to happen and it feels unsafe. And so it's breaking that down and rewiring it. That's where the work is. Of course. And then what steps can we do? Would it just be like going back and just like giving yourself reassurance, positive affirmations? Because like people will be so scared. They rather struggle financially. They rather like take take like a pay cut. They 
it's like you're you could be chasing your goals or your dreams and it's like no no way they 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 just don't want to do it it really does come down to taking the leap knowing recognizing that it's scary understanding that the universe is you know if you take this jump into the unknown into something that feels scary the universe is going to catch you yeah a hundred percent it's very much easier said than done but yes it's that jump hurts that jump hurts yeah (laughs) yep yeah so it's it's really taking the leap and also just you can do this too like you can build more trust in taking the leap by going back and thinking about all the times that you did take the leap and that it worked out. So when we're able to reflect on those times, it gives us proof that we're going to be okay. And it makes the jump a little less scary. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Because sometimes it is scary. It's scary when you're the breadwinner and you've got bills to pay. And it's like, you're like thinking, oh, no now what like I don't even have a plan b and then next bills month is soon coming we're nearly nearing the due date for the rent and all gas and electric and so yeah you you can panic but I feel like in that leap the self-discovery and the lessons that you learn about yourself are priceless Mm -hmm. absolutely even even though it's like I think yeah even though that period is extremely difficult I think there was a quote I I I read and it said a comfort zone is a beautiful place but nothing ever grows there. Exactly. You will never grow in your comfort zone. And I think too the fear of staying where you are has to be greater than the fear of the unknown for you to be able to take that leap. Oh, Lex, can you explain that slowly for the people that th- that didn't even have enough time to catch that? Yeah, so the fear of staying where you are has to be greater than the fear of taking the leap. That's good. That's So, I mean, you really have to, like, if you're okay with staying where you're at, fine. But if you are just so, like, I'm ready for the next thing and, like, it pains you more to stay where you're at, you know you have to take the leap. A hundred percent. You know you have to. And there's, like, no, no turning back. Like, sometimes it's, like, you need to go it, like, go all the way. Like, you can't go halfway and then turn back because it's like you're, right. you're stuck in a limbo mm-hmm. yeah and uh, the other thing too I like to tell people is always think about like well what's the worst that will happen okay so you know maybe you're late on your mortgage payment or your rent what's the worst that could happen well you talk to your landlord and you work something out okay so then if you're constantly like asking what's the worst that can happen what ends up happening is you find that you're really going to end up being okay a hundred percent so you you know god forbid you you know you lose the apartment or your house or whatever do you have someone to stay with who would be you know open to you staying with them like probably i'm sure that you could find someone you know and i don't i don't mean to sound um, naive or anything because i do know that there are people in situations that aren't as fortunate but generally speaking you can always find some kind of safety yeah and then you look back at it and you're like wow okay it really wouldn't be that bad like it's worth the risk because that's probably not gonna happen all of that probably isn't gonna happen what's gonna happen is I'm gonna move to freelancing and make more money you know what I mean exactly yeah 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 every everything everything comes at a cost but I feel like in the end everything works out yeah it does. It always does. The universe is always conspiring in your favor. Always. I love that. I, I love your confidence. And you know the way you speak, you're like, hell yeah, it's, <laughs> it's with you. Lex, what can we um say about ego? Like ego getting in the way of manifesting, ego getting in the way of you progressing or you or, or blocking you in a way of stopping you from achieving or manifesting or taking that opportunity that's coming your way and instead delay it delays it. Yeah, your ego is always going to come up with some kind of excuse. It's always going to, it's your worst critic. It's always going to have some excuse as to why you can't do something, why you shouldn't do something. It will constantly argue with you. And it does take work to, at first, A, recognize it and be aware of it because you can't change anything until you're aware. So you what ends up happening is you start to take like a, an inventory of your thoughts and you start to see where is my ego coming through? What is it saying? And then start to argue back at your ego. So if your ego is giving you an excuse as to why you can't do it, then argue back, well, an excuse for why you should do it. And so once you're able to kind of have that own back and forth in your head, you realize, oh, wow, ego, like you're 
not helping me grow. So I'm going to make the decisions to grow. I love that. How how would an individual recognize that, that their fault is coming from an ego perspective? It takes a lot of sitting in your own thoughts, I think. Um, also meditating and just listening to what what kind of banter goes on in your head with your ego what is your ego constantly saying what are the patterns um and if you can say wow really that is just fear or fear of failure or a limiting belief your ego i should say your highest self think of your highest self as like the opposite of your ego your highest self is always going to help you to feel good if you're feeling bad or poorly or like something doesn't you know you're like feeling down about something it's your ego talking so just being able to recognize the differences between your ego and your highest self and yeah if your mindset's just not in the right spot that could all just be doing more harm than good exactly Lex exactly what's what little voice inside your head is just trying to keep you safe then you can start to really make those changes I love that because sometimes because of ego, people lose friendships, they'll lose opportunities, they would lose like relationships as well because of ego and just not being aware of how severe the situation may be. Like just, for example, if you if if they don't appreciate the situation or the individual or or like the thoughts are coming from an ego perspective and you don't recognize it, it's like sometimes you end up losing in the end. Yeah, absolutely. I will say though that though that you can actually lose friendships and relationships and stuff too through your higher self, but it's different. So, you know, with your ego, you could be pushing good people away. With your highest self, you'll be pushing the bad people away. I love that. So, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's such a crucial point, though. Yeah, and it's kind of hard to wrap your brain around at first. You're like, wait, what? But when you are really, truly embodying your highest self, you're growing. And so when you're growing and people aren't growing with you, that's when those relationships and stuff start to kind of fall away. And it doesn't have to be like a huge falling out, but... W- when you're your highest self and you're maintaining your vibration and you know there are some people who aren't on that level then they're not going to continue to stay in your life nor should they really because you're growing and you want to facilitate um relationships and friendships and things that are also vibrating on that level and that's not to say you know you can't ever talk to your lifelong best friend again anymore it's just that you know if they're not growing with you maybe you just don't spend as much time with them or you know you you have a little bit more difficult conversations or you honor your boundaries more Lex what would you say to the individual that has an attachment to someone that is no longer serving them from the like the level of their highest good does that make sense it's like Mm -hmm. it's like we're no longer on that level but I have an attachment and even though I'm doing the inner work even though um, I'm I'm doing these practices even though I'm changing my thought patterns it's like I still want to take you with me but the resistance is getting bigger bigger but I have an attachment to you so in situations like that you really have to start to like I said before honor your boundaries and if so if that person is infringing on that boundary in a certain way and it might not be so obvious it could just be that they're like not super supportive or you know they're kind of a negative Nancy in your life (laughs) negative Nancy (laughs) (laughs) you have to honor your boundaries and say you know okay I have love for this but I'm not going to have them around as much or I'm not going to let them infringe on this boundary anymore because you can still love somebody and not have them around Lex you you, you make it sound so easy I did this practice where (laughs) honestly I did this practice where I had to say like um I had someone with me telling me what to say and honestly I like for the first few minutes I couldn't even there was so much friction I couldn't even say the words and then and then the lady that I was with, she was like, listen, you're going to say, I love you, say the name, but I let you go. And I just physically like couldn't. And I had so much pain and I literally had tears rolling down my eyes. Yeah, it's hard. It's really, really hard, especially when you have love for someone, you know, it's like you don't, and a lot of it comes from people pleasing. Like you don't want to make anyone upset. You don't want to lose someone from your life, but it is for your best interest and theirs too, you know, like they, you know, maybe they have something they need to learn or, you know, it's just, you have to protect yourself. And, and if you're growing and learning, then the people around you have to be on that same page. 
I love that you said that. But sometimes I feel like just doing the work, it sucks. Like I remember no, just I remember no. just <laughs> crying. Just I could I did I just didn't want to say it. I didn't want to let go. I didn't want them to leave my life. I didn't want them to walk away. I didn't want to say, you know what? I've had enough. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, it's hard. I, I wish, you know, I don't want to sugarcoat it because I think people are sometimes like, oh, you know, this is just going to be easy and it's all supposed to be great. And it does get really hard, but that's just part of the human experience. You know, we are as human beings so intelligent and we have this vast range of emotion that we feel and we are living the human experience to feel all those things. So we're going to feel pain. We're going to feel that pain of like letting people go. And it sucks. It sucks so hard. I know. <laughs> I could almost hard. cry. Yeah. Um, Lex, was your journey ever lonely? Like, like say when you're like, you know what? I'm focusing on myself. I'm doing the inner work. Maybe people weren't vibing the way they used to because maybe you're vibing now on a higher frequency. Did it ever get lonely? It did. Um, and sometimes it still does. But I think what's really important to remember and what I remind myself of when I'm feeling that way is uh, you are your own best friend. And so you're living this life with you along the entire way. Like there is no single person that's going to be with you from beginning to end except for yourself. And so once you could kind of sit in that and realize like, wow, I really don't need anybody. Like I just need me. Like I need to make sure that I have a good relationship with myself because it might feel lonely sometimes and that's okay because I have me. And don't get me wrong, like humans are very social creatures and we do need relationships and stuff in our lives. But there are going to be points where, you know, you're growing and it kind of feels like no one else is growing with you. And that's where you're like, you know what? I'm holding my own hand. I'm my own best friend. I'm with myself through all of this. And there's a certain level of comfort that comes with that. A hundred percent. But it's just learning to be your own best friend. Because I know people, some people are scared of isolation or some people are scared to be alone in a room. Like they would rather stick at the relationship that's toxic or stick in an environment or stick with the individual that's not for them just because they don't want to do like they don't want to work on themselves they don't want to work with the they don't they basically don't want to look at the person in the mirror yeah and that could be terrifying it really really can a hundred percent a hundred percent um alex a question do you believe in vision boards I do and I don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know, I actually posted about this recently. So I used to make vision boards. I don't really do it anymore just because I feel like I don't need to. A lot of people see vision boards and they're like, oh my gosh, this is the best. But they end up doing it all wrong because what ends up happening is people like cut out pictures or find pictures and they put it all together. And while they're doing it, they're like, oh my gosh, I want this so bad. I want this so bad. And they're creating those feelings of lack like we talked about earlier. Yeah. And the point of it is, again, going back to the feelings, you need to get on that vibe of having those things. So it should be like an excitement thing as you're posting your pictures on your vision board and stuff like that. So people are like, oh, I made this vision board and like it's not working out. And nine times out of 10, it's because the intention isn't in the right spot or um, you're feeling the lack when you look at it like, oh, I just can't wait to have that. I just want that so bad. Well, if that's how you're feeling when you look at your vision board or when you make your vision board, then you've missed the mark and that's it's just going to bring more feelings of lack for you. So I, I think that they're fun when done correctly and could be useful when done correctly. Um, and for some people, that's just their jam because they're visual people. Um, I'm a visual person. That's why I like to visualize, but like vision boards don't really jive with me as well. But like I said, everybody has their own thing and I encourage people to try. I just encourage people to make sure that they know why they're doing it and make sure that their intention is in the right spot. I love it. People need to like look into the word intention and like just fall through with it because you don't want to do a task and get it wrong. Right. Right. Well, you also don't want to to do something that's going to make you feel not great exactly exactly it's like it's like scrolling on on um like instagram and it's like seeing all these things and it's like sometimes it's not even the reality right and it it, you know look we're talking about manifestation it it very well could be a reality and it all has to do with if you believe it can be or not of course a hundred percent 
Lex, how can we connect with you? How can we learn about you? Tell us about you. Tell us about your services. So I mostly hang out on Instagram at Manifest with Lex. Um, I also have a podcast, Your Manifestation BFF. It's on all major platforms. So that's where I hang out the most. Um, I haven't released a podcast episode in a while because I've been working on other things. But um, Will you? Huh? Will you? Like, will you do another episode? Oh, yes, absolutely. So I've, um, I'm actually in the middle of a launch for a program that I have out. It's called Fortune Freaks. And so I was working really hard on that. And I, the podcast just kind of happened to take a backseat. Um, but there will absolutely be more episodes and things. And I always ask my, my followers and stuff, you know, what do you want to hear? Because I don't want to record podcast episodes that aren't meaningful. Yeah. And so, you know, if anyone ever has a suggestion or has something that they want me to talk about on the podcast, I love getting those suggestions. It just makes it easier for me because if it's something you want to hear, it's something that I want to tell you about. I don't want to just be like talking at you and telling you things that you don't care about. So yes, there will absolutely be more podcasts. Lovely. And say for the launch, what can we, when is that coming out? So I am already promoting it now. It's actually on pre-launch pricing right now and it's coming out at the end of the month. So I have that Fortune Freaks program. It's all about financial abundance and manifesting money. And then my signature program is called Manifestation BFF Bootcamp. So Fortune Freaks is more money focused and it's less intensive. Whereas Manifestation BFF Bootcamp, we really work one-on-one on on the life that you want to create and the things that you want to manifest. And we work specifically on, you know, your limiting beliefs and the things that are coming up for you and like embodying very specifically what's going on for you. It's very, it's a one-on-one program. So it's, it's just very personalized. I feel like I feel like that's that's the good one. That's the cookie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's really the intensive one. So, you know, everybody is kind of looking for different things. Some people just want to know a little bit about how to manifest money and that's and you know, like how to, you know, find the satisfaction in your bank account and how to attract more money and and master the energy of money. And that, you know, Fortune Freaks is great for that. If you want to really dive deep um because that program isn't exactly one-on-one, then, you know, Manifestation BFF Bootcamp is more very intensive. Um, So we can still talk about money and and financial freedom if that's what you're after. It's just way more personalized. A hundred percent. No, I love that. I love the one-to-one working. Lex, will you write a book? Oh, well, maybe one day. (laughs) Um, I... I'm kind of a squirrel brain sometimes and I think writing a book might be hard, but it's something that I've kind of been thinking about. I don't know that it will happen anytime soon, but I would like to try one day. A hundred percent. You need to put it on the bucket list. I know. The two manifest list. A hundred percent. So we have the course that that's that's come out. We so we have two courses so far, right? Anything else that, that our listeners can can get involved with you, get to know you, hang out with you? Yeah. Um, I mean, if someone's looking for coaching and like isn't, you know, feeling like they fit into Fortune Freaks or Manifestation BFF Bootcamp, um, I always encourage people like slide into the DMs, like let's just have a conversation. Um, I offer intensives or, you know, we can custom build some kind of coaching program for you if that's something you're interested in. But I just like to make friends and I like to talk about manifestation. So like if there's questions and things that come up, like don't be a stranger, just send me a message and we'll chat. I'm, I think, a pretty approachable person. I love it. <laughs> um, no, because it, so, yeah. because you're just so genuine. Some people are not like that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Lex, it was so nice to have you on the show. Thank you for being a part of Gentle Touch. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your tips and sharing your story. Thank you so much for having me. You're very, very welcome. Any last words? Um, Just if you take anything from today, just find some joy and create that feeling as much as you can and just feel gratitude and amazing things will come to you. Those are some golden nuggets, Lex. Thank you so much. Lex, I'm going to round it up here. Comments, shares, leave a review if something resonates with you. That is always very helpful. Otherwise, I just love like chatting and hanging out with you guys. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Perfect. Thank you so much for being so friendly, Lex. Of course. 
Yes, it was. Again, thank you so much for having me. I loved doing this. You're very, very welcome. And I'm going to um, be looking at your posts and I can't wait to see what other things, what other projects you have going on. Okay, awesome. You too. Bye, Lex. Bye. Hope you guys enjoyed this podcast and found this podcast useful. If you did, be sure to leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you for listening and joining Gentle Touch. I'll see you in the next episode. Want to get in touch? Feel free to send me a DM on Instagram. Link is in the description. Be sure to follow and subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you're on. Stay tuned and keep listening. Much love.